Take back your soul. This is another transmission from Mahadeva here at ThunderWizard.com headquarters where you find the world's only unified spiritual energy system at ThunderWizard.com. Get ready because here I come. Hello YouTube, this is Mahadeva the Thunder Wizard and I wanted to discuss with you my thoughts as well as my personal experiences with uh, alien beings, uh, strange spiritual entities, other dimensions. And I didn't realize how extensive my personal experience was until I actually started writing the notes so that I would have something to look at. Um, but I didn't realize it, but I've, I've had some pretty loopy experiences. Uh, now, I, there are people that have had far more loopy experiences than I have. At least as far as I know, but I was surprised at how strange my experiences have been. And what prompted me to talk about this today was uh, I just uploaded a video on the Mahadeva Speaks channel. And of course, I invite you to please go over there and subscribe and hit the bell button there so that you can um, participate on that channel and that channel is just simply Mahadeva Speaks. Um, and so in today's channeling, I asked Mahadeva a simple question which was, what are aliens? Now, I had ideas, I still do, you know, opinions of what I think aliens are. And I was fully expecting Mahadeva to begin speaking about that, but he didn't. And, you know, that's kind of, um, well, that's at least some more evidence that it's not just me uh, channeling myself, because I'm very fond of my own opinions. So, um, you know, uh, when Mahadeva's opinions and mine you know, sync up, I feel pretty good about that. But at the same time, I go, I wonder if this is just coming from me. But but that's not what happened. Anyway, you can go listen to that um, because I'm still processing it and I'll probably have to listen to it again. But uh, it got me thinking about this and I just thought I would share some of that with you. Before I go any further, please be aware that these links are here for a reason. If you're new to the channel, I want you to go over here to thunderwizard.com and I want you to scroll around until you see Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong and I want you to subscribe. Um, it's best to wait till the beginning of the month. You can subscribe towards the end of the month. Just message me and um, if you subscribe the last week of the month, I will refund you that last week of the previous month. But... It's a good idea to, excuse me, my, uh, my all-natural ginger soda here, um, uh, to subscribe at the beginning of the month. Anyway, sorry about that. Let's make sure I stay on topic here. So, this is about aliens and strange spirits from other dimensions. And it's not just aliens from other times or other places or other dimensions it's also there are non-human entities that live in dimensions that human beings, even souls of human beings, are not supposed to ever go. You know, we've been led to believe based uh, on the Abrahamic spiritual tradition that, you know, human beings are it. That's all that there is. And there's just kind of God and humans and angels and that's it. You know, they even tell you that, you know, your animals won't make it into heaven. By the way, there's a YouTube channel I'm really kind of curious about. I'm, I'm almost obsessed with it. I'm not quite obsessed with it. But I'm finding it very entertaining. And that is a, a YouTube channel called Billy Speaks. B-I-L-L-I -L -L Speaks. And it's a cat. And it's a cat who is able to communicate um, by pressing buttons that, you know, say words, communicate um, at the level of like a, you know, a young human child. 
and, and it's really amazing. At first you think, well, it's just a cat and it's pressing buttons to get food. But then you realize, no, this cat really understands language, human language. You can't tell by looking at it because it's got the dumb cat look on its face all the time. But um, that just, again, reminds me that human beings are not the only game in town. There's other kinds of consciousness out there. And uh, we just happen to have these ambidextrous hands with thumbs on them. If we didn't have thumbs, trust me, we wouldn't be able to do any of the stuff that we do. We would be as ridiculous as the rest of the animals on this planet in terms of, you know, just uh, not being able to create societies. Any case, let's talk about aliens and, and strange spirits from other dimensions. There are beings that exist in our universe that are very different from us, and they would terrify us if we encountered them. And I mean uh, terrify, not just like frightened like you just saw. You know, they're like if you saw something really frightening that was part of your reality, like you saw a guy held up a gun to you. That would be incredibly frightening. But you still would be part of the human dimension. Uh, some, you know, building collapses. Tremendously frightening, but you would still be part of your human dimension. But there are things that are more frightening than those experiences because they're not part of our human dimension. And it's incredibly traumatic for us to experience it. We probably experience it a lot more than we realize, but we just tune it out or we choose to forget about it. We have... I, I, you know, I'll talk about one experience where I did that. And uh, had I not had the experience in the way that I did, I would have had this otherworldly experience and my brain would have just simply deleted that memory and I never would have remembered. So there are beings that exist in our universe, but they're, they're so different from us. And the, the dimensions that they live in are so different from ours that we cannot understand them. In fact, there are dimensions that we will never go to. Our, your human soul will never go to certain dimensions because you're just not built for it. And uh, when, when those entities from those dimensions enter ours, it is always very traumatic. And because, you know, just like other animals, um, you know, have different, value systems there are entities out there that don't share the same values that we do and so we would experience them as evil and probably vice versa they would they might experience us as evil also because we don't share their values you know there's plenty of animals on this planet that would say that about us again thinking about billy speaks you know uh it, it makes me think you know how intelligent are all these other animals that we consume you know, uh, chicken, fish, beef, pork, you know, lamb. I mean, I wonder if these animals, if you gave them the same opportunity, would be able to speak. Because, I mean, cats are pretty stupid, you know, compared to dogs. Dogs are smart, but cats are pretty stupid. And if a cat can hear and understand English and communicate not only you know, things like give me food, but communicate complex emotional experiences, which is what this cat does, then makes you wonder what's going on with the rest of these animals. We must seem evil to them because we're dominating them. We put them in cages. We slaughter them. You know, we, we, I, I wouldn't want to be another animal <laughs> on this planet. <laughs> um, because uh, we've got these opposable thumbs that make it so easy to control everything. Uh, all right, so um, thankfully though, many of these dimensions are dimensions that we are separated from, we'll never experience. You know, when I visited Hela, the goddess of the underworld, in um, a dream state, I asked her, you know, would she please communicate with me? And then one evening I went, uh, was taken into her realm. And it was a pretty intense experience. It bordered on, you know, strange uh, and traumatic. It was very weird. And uh, I, 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 there was a, you know, there's some aspects of it I wouldn't want to re-experience. But I could tell that I was right on the edge of human experience. 
and that there was literally a barrier. You know, it was like a wall of a cave. But if I were to go on the other side of that wall, it would no longer be a human experience and it would, you know, I would cease to exist. I would be torn to pieces. You know, my identity would be completely torn apart. And um, I was grateful that, you know, she had protected me from that. And that that's really what happens when you go to the underworld. In between lives, when you go to the underworld, you go to a place that is, you know, it's the border between our human, even spiritual understanding and other dimensions that we would not survive in. Our, even our soul identity wouldn't survive there. Uh, but thankfully, you know, we're separated from that. So I'll share one experience that was uh, very uh, interesting that I never shook. And it's, you know, this the picture of this guy. I don't know what movie this is from. I, I'm sure it's from a movie. But um, I think it might even be from uh, Fire in the Sky. I'm about to mention that. So there was a movie called Fire in the Sky. I believe it came out in the 90s. If, it feels like it wasn't that long ago to me, but it was. It must have been in the 90s, so it's probably 30 years old. And I remember seeing that in the theater, and it's about a guy named Travis Walton. You can look him up uh, on Google. He's uh, well known for, you know, his uh, take of, you know, his experience of being abducted by these guys. And... In that movie, that there's an incredibly frightening uh, sequence in that movie during his abduction, which is just horrifically frightening. And uh, I remember being traumatized in the movie theater because I was having flashbacks. That was my experience. It wasn't like I was watching a scary movie that I was really believing and having an experience. It, I, I was having flashbacks. And uh, during that you know, that scene as I watched it, I was sure that I was remembering, you know, what had happened to me, especially the part about being on the, um, on the, you know, their little operating table. Now, Travis Walton has a different story. He says that even though it was incredibly traumatic for him and very frightening for him, um, it didn't happen the way that they portrayed it in the movie. And that's because, you know, they got to they got to make money, so they have to embellish. But it felt very real to me when I watched it, and at the very least, the feelings. Um, and uh, also watching um, Communion. I believe Communion, I, it was on TV. Was it a movie? Was it a series? I don't know. But uh, Whitley Strieber's experience, those things were also very frightening to me. You know, the, the stuff that I've seen on some of those, some of those movies. And I feel like I was, I'm watching flashbacks. I don't have any conscious memory of ever physically being visited by one of these aliens or, or being abducted, but my body seems to have some kind of memory of it that I don't remember. Um, and I remember another experience I had with a woman that I was dating years, and I, probably another 30 years ago. And we didn't date for very long, but um, I remember I was talking with her about the idea that people who have been abducted have this memory of during their abductions as little children, they go to these schools. And in these schools, there are other children there. And the aliens are teaching the human children things. They don't remember those things consciously. They're then put back in their bed and they wake up the next day and they don't remember. So it's happening on a deeply unconscious level. But of course, these do rise to the surface and many people have remembered this. And I, I had, either I had the memory or she had the memory that we had been in some kind of one of these alien schools together as little kids. And um, every time that I would want to talk about it, you know, and say, hey, I think I remember this happening and we were doing this, that she would, she'd freak out. So she finally freaked out so bad that she made me promise to never talk about it again. We ended up breaking up, so we didn't. But 
that was what was intense was the feeling that happened when I started to, it was like some veil was starting to open. When I would talk to her about, you know, um, that little kids are abducted in the middle of the night and they're taken to these schools where the aliens have all the kids in the neighborhood or some of the kids in the neighborhood and they're teaching them things. Uh, and um, the more that I talked about it, the more that I started getting specific because something about being with her would bring up these memories, talking with her about it. And uh, she started, it, it was the, the feeling that the, like some, some, uh, you know, some curtain was being opened and also her freaking out, her experience of it. Like it was, it was really traumatizing to her as she started thinking about it. And um, it was like more real for her than it was for me, which is why she made me stop talking about it. But that's something that happened. Um, when I was four, five years old, I'm sure I've shared this on the on the channel before. I remember playing with a little kid in his backyard and, you know, I, I don't remember what we were playing, but I, I was running away from him like he was chasing me or something like that. And I ran around the house and on the side of the house where the trash cans were, remember those big metal clanky trash cans? We don't have those anymore, but those metal, uh, like, like steel, metal, aluminum, clanky trash cans. Anyway, ran around the side of the house where the trash cans were and up from the ground like it was on an elevator coming through the ground was this reptilian creature that looked a lot like the creature from the Black Lagoon. You remember him? You can Google him if you're too young to remember him. That was from a movie in the 60s, 50s and 60s, I believe, called The Creature from the Black Lagoon and looked... Uh, just like him, at least to my eyes. Maybe I turned him into that because I had seen that. But this reptilian being came out of the ground covered in scales. And and um, I, I, was, I wasn't frightened. I was just kind of dumbfounded. And I stood there and looked at it. And it stood there and it looked at me. And it was looking at me knowingly. You know, like it wasn't surprised. But I was like, what? And, um, you know, after a couple of seconds, I turned around and ran back. And I told my friend, I said, the creature from the Black Lagoon is on the side of the house. And he, you know, was laughing and he was playing. I said, no, 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 I'm not playing anymore. And I don't remember. I think we went over and looked and, of course, it wasn't there. But uh, that was another experience that I had. Um, I've shared about my experience with Bigfoot numerous times. And that is that is by far the most frightening and disturbing experience of my entire life. And I've had frightening experiences, you know, almost dying in certain instances, surfing giant waves and being held under and thinking I'm going to drown, um, you know, thinking that you're going to die any second. Uh, you know, those are frightening, but my experience with Bigfoot was so horrifically traumatizing and it's because it was coming from a different dimension that is not part of our human dimension and i've shared about it before but but briefly what happened was is that uh every year i used to go up to the wilderness in the sierra nevada mountains specifically the southern sierra nevada which is the most uh you know, the most untouched, uh, most, you know, rugged wilderness, probably in the lower 48 states, I would say, perhaps. Um, and the only way you could get up to camp in the, you know, the, the highest uh, parts of the mountains was either you hiked in on foot or you went on, on horseback. And I would take a horse, you know, on horseback and go back. I don't even know how many miles, miles and miles and miles and miles. And um, the first night camping there, the month before, I was meditating every night because, you know, Bigfoot supposedly lives up in those particular mountains. And uh, I meditated every night asking Bigfoot, whatever that was, to come and uh, visit me while I was up there. 
thinking that what I, what was going to happen is I was going to see something like you know an animal, like you see a bear or a mountain lion, and ooh ha, ah, oh, you know. But instead, it was going to be this big, giant, hairy, half human, half you know gorilla creature, and it was going to be really interesting and fun. But that's not how it turned out. And without getting into too many of the details, at sunset, the first night that I was there, the first or second night I was there, sunset was coming in and I was getting ready to cook my dinner. And I heard this scream that was easily the loudest scream of any animal that's ever <laughs> you know, been created ever. And, and it had, it went into ranges of sound that were beyond any animal, any human. Uh, simultaneously, it had a high pitch sound to it that was outside of human range, but, it, you know, had the feeling of a woman screaming in terror. It had a low vibration that was beneath anything any human could create, which sounded and felt like, you know, the roar of a dinosaur. And then, you know, in the middle, there was, it was just, you know, it just, and on top of that, it, it went right through me physically. I could feel that w that sound was vibrating on a level that went completely through my physical body and um, made me uh, just, you know, uh, completely paralyzed. And my brain, and it, went, it lasted for about three seconds. And uh, in that space of time, three seconds is a long time. And my, my brain, trying to figure out what it was, went through every single possible animal that it could be. And my brain was like, no, it's not that. Nope, it's not a mountain lion. Nope, it's not a bear. Nope, it's not an eagle. Nope, it's not, a, it's not any of these things that, that I've seen and experienced before. And then at the end of those... Three seconds, my brain said, I don't know what that is. And my brain broke. And then suddenly the scream stopped. And um, my brain then said, that didn't happen and began to erase it. And before my brain could erase that memory from me, the second scream came in. Same exact thing happened, had lasted for three seconds. My brain went through all of it and my, my brain broke. And uh, then uh, it stopped. And then my brain said, that didn't just happen and began to erase that memory. Then the third one came in and then my brain just cracked wide open. And uh, I was in multiple dimensions at once. And the feeling that I had was absolute utter terror. Not like I'm af afraid of this big giant thing, which I couldn't see it. It was right you know, it was twilight and it was in the trees and it was just beyond my ability. You know, I couldn't see, Pat, you know, my, my, the fire that I had lit wouldn't, you know, couldn't light that far back into the trees. But there was definitely something there. And, um, uh, and so um, at that moment, uh, when I was in multiple I felt like I was in multiple dimensions. I, it really felt like I was going to just come apart. I was going to stop existing. And I felt that whatever that was, if it came into my camp, I would die from the shock of it. And uh, so I sent out the, the very clear mental message. Thank you for coming. Please do not come into my camp. I won't survive. And uh, then the, the intensity of the feeling just kind of drifted away. And then my brain said, oh, okay, let's just pretend that didn't happen. And I went on and I cooked my dinner and I went to sleep. And it wasn't until the next morning when I woke up, you know, after I woke up and the sun was shining and the birds and it was beautiful and all oh, this beautiful wilderness. <gasps> and then I, I had a full remembrance of what happened. Uh, a bunch of other things happened on that trip. Because whenever I went up to those mountains, which are very powerful, sacred places, a lot of things happen, but we won't talk about that in this video. Um, there's been other experiences that uh, up in the mountains where I've had experiences with what I can only describe as feeling like nature spirits, um, 
uh, deities, entities, you know, all kinds of differing kinds of spirits that would come through, especially in dreams and in, and at night. Um, you know, being in the, there's a reason why people are afraid to be in the deep forest, you know, in the wilderness at night. And it's not just because of animals. You know, there's a reason why people are afraid of really wild places because that's there there really are portals to other dimensions this this earth is not just here for us and we don't realize it but uh human beings create a bubble of perception that you know wherever they are especially if they're in numbers and if they create cities whole entire cities will have a bubble of perception around them and there will be a reality that is based on the collective agreement on an unconscious level of what our reality is. And when you go into real uh, wild places in the world where human beings have not been able to do that, you start to realize there's other kinds of realities. And um, when I think about Bigfoot, um, I believe that Bigfoot, you know, that we humans and Bigfoot, there, I think there's a common ancestor, a pre-human, you know, walking on two legs, hominid creature. And then we started going in two different directions in terms of our reality that we started to create. And I believe that those two realities sort of, you know, went off in two different directions, but they're still sort of dovetailed together which is why Bigfoot, you know, this is very common. Bigfoot, Yeti, you'll see their tracks going off in the snow and then they just disappear. Uh, th that kind of stuff happens all the time and there's no shortage of people that have that experience. That these are beings that are in and out of our dimension. So there's like our dimensions dovetail. And I think that has to do with the conscious intention of each species as it evolved. And they have their own, you know, we maybe our reality is like that for them. Maybe human beings sort of appear and disappear in their world. You know, maybe our cities sort of appear and disappear. You know, maybe we're these magical little gremlin creatures to them that, you know, you know, like the way we, you know, talk about... Um, you know, uh, trolls and elves and uh, dwarves and little people and all that, uh, you know, uh, leprechauns. We might be like that for them. I don't know. Um, you know, leprechauns are supposed to be beings that aren't necessarily friendly to humans. Magical, but not friendly. And Bigfoot, the same. You know, Bigfoot is, is a protector of the earth, but, you know, there's plenty of uh, people's experience of you know, Bigfoot not being a friendly person to be around. So we obviously, we humans are pretty destructive. So we probably have that same experience. You know, they have that same experience of us. I'm just guessing, but that's what we're doing on this particular video. Um, and there are times, you know, when I used to do that, I haven't done that in a long time. I haven't felt the need to do that. Um, but uh, I had to do that every year. I had to spend two weeks alone, alone in the wilderness, backpacking and camping in the wilderness. And uh, trust me, if you've never done it, you have no idea what it's like to be without telephone, you know, back then, radio, television, phone, internet. You have no idea what it's like to not have access to those things. And I strongly suggest everybody do that at least once in their life. Because what I, would, what I found out is that after about three days, I was going crazy. This was even before Internet. I started to go crazy after three days because I didn't have television or telephone or newspapers, uh, things like that. And um, not hearing cars and electricity and other vehicles and all that. I mean, I started losing it and feeling very uncomfortable. I was addicted to all that technology after three days. And then after about six days, what would happen is that my brain would, would break. And then I would become aware of all of the illusions that I took to be real things. 
things like money. I'd become aware that money didn't exist. In fact, let's think about it for a second. Let's think about the people every day who go out and pave streets and build buildings. Let's think about the people that go and manufacture, you know, cut down trees to make wood, the people who make cement, you know, so think about somebody building a house and all of those materials there. Now we have this belief that, well, they wouldn't be able to do that without money because without money, you can't, you can't buy things. But the truth is, is that somebody went and gave them that stuff. Somebody else went and worked, dug that stuff out of the ground or chopped it, chopped it down in the forest and, you know, cut it on and created machines. Money doesn't do that. Money it isn't even dollar bills anymore. Money is just numbers going across this thing called the internet. There's nothing there. So it's not like we really need money to build buildings, to build houses, to farm food, to put food in trucks and put them in grocery stores. We go into, you know, I go in the grocery store and I don't even pull money out anymore. You know, I go to the grocery store, I get my food and I just stick a little, you know, plastic card in a thing and I pull it out and I take the food. There's, there's money doesn't exist. It's just an idea. The truth is we could do all this just because we chose to. If we got together, the thing that makes society and food and things like that is people deciding to, but it's, we have to convince ourselves to do it. So we say, oh yeah, I'm doing it because he paid me to do it. Oh yeah, I... I got a car because I bought it. But none of that's true. We could just decide to do things for each other. We could just decide as groups to do things and make things happen and build things. And it would have nothing to do with money. It's just because we chose to do it. Those kinds of concepts, you know, that money doesn't. And that, that was, again, way back, you know, even, you know, different than the way things are now. Money just doesn't exist. Uh, things like, um, you know, reputation. Um, you know, this was earlier in my life, so there was a strong uh, uh, impulse for me to become somebody and make a name for myself and have a career. And then I'd realized that's all nonsense too. All of that is nonsense. It's all made up nonsense that drives my entire life. And so once a year, I would have to do that and just sort of empty my head of all that stuff. And uh, again, unless you've done it, you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what it's like. I, if you're able to spend a week or better yet, two weeks by yourself in the wilderness, I recommend it. Of course, make sure you know what you're doing. Um, but it can start by just going somewhere like to a spa where you're not allowed to bring any, um, any devices and spending three days without television, without internet, without your uh, phone, without music, without anything, except just yourself and the physical world around you. So give it a try sometime and you'll see what I mean. Um, so uh, I've also had uh, the feeling that when I was in the forest, that if I stayed any longer, there were some times that I would start to to go into some other realm that if I stayed any longer, it felt like and I, it was a real feeling like if I stay here, I'm going to disappear. I'm going to, you know, some some door is going to open and I'm going to walk through it and I'll never come back into this world again. And um, it felt very real. And I would have to after coming down, you know, out of the forest and then getting back in my car and then driving down the mountain, I would I would. Lots of times I would weep because it was so painful coming back into such a dense, ugly, you know, environment, human controlled environment. The air, the airwaves around human beings, just the thoughts of human beings is a very dense, you know, aggressive, violent thing. Everybody's so filled with fear and anger and ego and all of that. And to come out of the wilderness and to, you know, I could feel that when I get down to about 5,000 feet, that particular mountain, I'd bump into a wall of human, and I could feel it. I could feel the human collective unconscious. 
And I would usually weep every time I felt it because it was so painful. But, um, all right. So, and of course, you may have seen, if you watch the channel, I won't get into it, but I have shared some of my experiences as an exorcist where I have seen people who were possessed with uh, evil spirits and uh, having seen the evil spirits speak through them and manifest, watching people's com their face completely change into another creature altogether. Um, in one case, uh, a guy, is, this was my first exorcism, um, the, the guy's face changed, you know, the skin completely changed into it was, it was white as a sheet of paper. His eyes had no pupils. It was completely red. Not like bloodshot red, but the color red. And, there, you know, there was, you know, there was a black pupils and then no irises and just red. And, um, you know, those kinds of things and, uh, you know, all that stuff that happens in The Exorcist, except I didn't see anybody's head spin around. I saw pretty much everything else. Uh, so that that's a real life changer when you get to experience that. I want to share one thing with you because the, the, the thing that is most intriguing for me is the idea that there are dimensions. Because even if I talk about uh, ghosts and demons, it's still part of our human reality, even though it's frightening and weird and strange. You know, it's, it's not part of our, our supposed human reality, but everybody senses them and feels it. Even little kids know that these beings exist. But there was a, a time when I went to another dimension that was so alien that it traumatized me. And to this day, I am not able to bring up any specific memories. The only thing I can remember is when I was coming out of it. And I was asleep. I was sleeping and I was married at the time. And so I was sleeping in bed next to my then wife. And the only thing I remember about this is I remember that I was in this very dark place. It was just completely pitch black dark. And there was this being of light, like an angel, you know, with a flowing robe and a, you know, completely white glowing, you know, essence of, you know, what you would think an angel was. And she was reaching down. And she was saying to me, it's all right. It's okay. You're okay. Come with me. You were just sleeping. It's okay. Come with me. And it was very real. And there was this, this angel, this, this celestial female being that was floating through this blackness and coming down, descending down and taking me by the hand and pulling me out of this darkness. And then I woke up and it was my wife. Instead of her being this, you know, this shining angel, she was just, you know, barely, you're, it's okay, it's okay, you're asleep. Wake up, wake up, you're asleep. And that was so shocking to go from that, that to be seeing this beautiful, uh, you know, an angelic, bright, shining, spiritual creature, you know, just morph slowly into, you know, my human wife who was dead asleep and, okay, uh, wake up. But I honestly think that I saw her for, you know, her true spiritual essence. That I, that in that moment, what I was seeing was not the physical illusion that we have. I was actually seeing her, who she was, when she's not in a physical body. So, you know, I didn't get along with my ex-wife and things didn't go very well and I wasn't pleased and we, we have no contact. You know, I don't even know where she is. I'm sure she doesn't know where I am. But every human being is that. that that's a lesson I'll never forget, that every single human being, whether they're a bum, whether they're a murderer, whether they're a king, supermodel, that the essence of them behind that human facade, the projection, is this angelic, bright, beautiful, spiritual being of light. 
Anyway, so this uh, angel reaches down and pulls me out, and I wake up, and it's just my wife, and she goes, wake up, you're dreaming. And then she turns around and goes back to sleep. And all I knew was I was thinking to myself, where the heck was I? And I had, it was like I had, the feeling was that was still there from where I w just was. I don't, I couldn't remember where I just was because it didn't fit my brain that my brain wouldn't have had the ability to comprehend it. It was so different that my brain could not bring back anything from it and give me a memory. But the feeling was there. And I had, and I've never had this level of feeling, not even with Bigfoot, but the feeling of, oh my God, I've just been someplace really, really frightening to me. And I had to get up out of bed. And I remember, you know, putting my hands so I could feel something real, you know, and putting my hands on the kitchen counter and just kind of looking and, um, and had to take a deep breath and just like, what the heck was that? Where the heck was I? And that's what I kept asking. I could feel that I was somewhere that was not part of our dimension, that was so alien and so different that I almost didn't make it back. That was the feeling I had. The feeling I had was that I had somehow slipped through the cracks and escaped this matrix that I, that I must have been, my spirit must have been really, you know, exploring while I, my, I was physically asleep and my, my spirit must have gone somewhere you know, do not enter. And it went in anyway. Oh, screw that. I want to see what's in there. And I went in there and I almost didn't come out. That was the feeling I had that I almost didn't come out. And if it weren't for that, that being of light, which turned out to be my now ex-wife, if she hadn't have grabbed me and pulled me out, I don't, I don't think I would have made it. Could have been one of those times, you know, this could have been some of the things that happens when people die in their sleep. You know, it's possible I might have just simply died in my sleep and she never would have known. The only way that she knew that something was going on because she heard me barely squeak out this, somebody help me. And I don't remember doing that. Wherever I was, that I had put such monumental effort into saying, somebody help me, help me, I'm trapped, whatever it was I was saying. I don't remember that. I only remember the being reaching down and pulling me out of something and saying, it's, it's all right, you're just asleep, it's all right. But before that, I don't remember, because then she told me later, yeah, because you were, I could tell you were in trouble because you were saying, help me, I'm trapped. But I really was, it wasn't just like I had a dream, because I've had those dreams, you know, where you have the, uh, the, sleep paralysis and you think you see you know a ghost or a demon i've had that before i know what sleep paralysis is like you have a nightmare and you have sleep paralysis and then you wake up and you go oh it was just a dream boy that was scary this wasn't one of those things this was i really was somewhere else and i she may have saved my life i don't know so uh the last thing i'm going to talk about is aliens and I remember when I first started doing the Maoshan spirit fighting. And I used to call it Vulcan Kung Fu because the energy of it, and some of you may be experiencing this, the energy of it is, it's not human. Kundalini Yoga, for example, very powerful stuff as well, but it's very human and it's very user-friendly. And the energy when you do Kundalini Yoga and mantra meditation is that, you know, you have this feeling like the energy is like, hey, man, you know, just, you know, I'm here to help you and, you know, go at your own pace and everything's going to be all right. It, it wants to work with you. Whereas this stuff says, oh, you want power? Okay, come here. And it just starts filling you with a high level vibrations of power that are completely above normal human existence. And if you're not ready for it, it can feel very frightening. And um, it feels like the teachers uh, of this are almost on that level where they're not really human, where they don't have that kind of compassion for you. 
You know, they just think, oh, you want power? I'm going to give you power. And then you you have to deal with all of these, you know, uh, attachments and emotions that aren't serving you. And it feels like, you know, somebody's, you know, it's kind of like a Dr. Manhattan experience, of course. It's not pleasant, but man, the power is unbelievable. And uh, I've shared some of those experiences, but this one is I was practicing. This was still fairly early on in my practice, but I was getting into some very deep stuff and I was having a lot of success and I was gaining a lot of power. And um, I remember waking up one morning and having a memory. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't like I remembered having a dream. I had this memory, but it wasn't like a memory, like the same kind of memory that I have you know, when I woke up this morning and I remember what I did this morning, it was, but that was the feeling of it. And I couldn't decide whether or not it was a dream or a memory or if it was on another level. I don't know. But I had this memory of sitting up in bed and looking at my bedroom door, which I, you know, I loved, lived alone, so I didn't need to close my bedroom door. And on the other side, and I'm looking because I could I have this feeling that something's there. And on the other side of the door, I see one of these guys poke their heads out. He only pokes out about half of his head. And he's looking at me and there's this feeling of he's very curious. Like whatever he is doing is creating some vibrations. I was off abducting some other kid. I have some other karmic thing, but this guy's energy, I could feel all the way over there. I just had to come and see what this guy was all about. And that was the feeling I had, that 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 the power of this stuff had, had sent a vibration that even those guys went, hmm, this guy's into some very powerful, different kind of stuff. I didn't get the feeling that I was somebody that he wanted to you know, abduct or anything like that. Whatever connection he had was from afar. At least that's what it felt at the time. It didn't feel like it was evil or wrong. And again, I don't even know if it was a dream or a memory. I still can't figure that out. But I definitely have that memory of him, of him, that, of that you know, his head. He had bigger, bigger eyes than this guy did. This guy looks more like an angry, skinny, drug addict human. But you know, it was one of those typical grays with the huge head and the huge eyes and the thin lips and the no nose or whatever. And he was just, I see you there. And that was it. So, uh, you know, we're living in very strange times. Very, 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 very strange times. And I still would like to believe that we are on the precipice of a huge transformation. And I think one of the things that will help that is if we open our minds with, again, love and trust and confidence in the universe that we can go through our own Dr. Manhattan experience and come out the other side. And, I, and I'd like to see that happen. Who knows what's going to happen, but uh, um, things, something has to change, that's for sure. We can't keep going the way we are, so something has to change somehow. Anyway, those are just some of my thoughts. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're enjoying the new uh, channel. If you haven't seen it yet, please go over to it, Mahadeva Speaks. If you have a question for him, leave him a question in the video comments on that channel, and if I like your question, I will ask him. If you have any questions for me, you can leave me a question here on the video comments of this channel. And of course, if you want to be a Dr. Manhattan, I am sharing with you all of the knowledge that I have, all the tools that I have. And currently that is in the Warrior 90 Day Lightning Qigong and the Maoshan.Thunderwizard.com. Those are the, those two dovetail together. You're free to just do one of these, but um, if you really want to be an elite spirit fighter, Dr. Manhattan, I recommend this along with this. And there's more stuff coming. So the more that you guys do, you know, I will reveal everything if I feel that uh, people can learn it and do it and if you want it.
All right, that's it for me. I wish you guys all the best. I will see you guys all next time. Take back your soul. This is another transmission from Mahadeva here at ThunderWizard.com headquarters where you find the world's only unified spiritual energy system at ThunderWizard.com. Get ready because here I come.